Congratulations. You've just taken the first important step in possibly saving a life. A loved one, friend, neighbor could be saved from sudden cardiac arrest by using the Heart Start Home Defibrillator. And in the process, you become part of something larger, the movement to bring defibrillators from the hospital emergency room to places where they are most likely to be needed, the home, where more than 70% of sudden cardiac arrests occur. This is possible because home defibrillators are now surprisingly easy to operate, extremely reliable and virtually maintenance free. Of course, if you still have questions after viewing this video, please do not hesitate to call us. By now you're aware of sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA. But how exactly does it differ from a heart attack? Well, for one, sudden cardiac arrest is sudden and often without warning. And believe it or not, the majority of SCA victims have no previous symptoms of heart disease. In a heart attack, an artery is blocked and blood flow is restricted, resulting in the death of heart tissue. In some cases, this may lead to SCA but sudden cardiac arrest can happen for a number of reasons. With sudden cardiac arrest, the electrical system of the heart short circuits, typically causing it to quiver in an abnormal rhythm known as ventricular fibrillation. Within seconds, blood ceases to circulate and the person loses consciousness. Without blood flow, brain death starts in a matter of minutes. Even though defibrillation won't save every victim of cardiac arrest, shocking the heart back to a normal pumping rhythm or defibrillation is the only effective way to treat sudden cardiac arrest. For every minute without defibrillation, chances of survival decrease seven to 10%. Beyond 10 minutes, survival is very unlikely. So obviously, time is of the essence. If you have concerns about your health or an existing medical condition, talk to your doctor. A defibrillator is not a replacement for seeking medical care. Your Heart Start Home Defibrillator package contains the defibrillator, a red carry case, and a 911 EMS carry case card to be labeled with your address and the phone number of your local emergency medical service if it is not 911, and inserted in the front of the carry case. One adult smart pads cartridge, one battery, a literature envelope containing a quick start poster with setup instructions, a quick reference for use during an emergency, an owner's manual with setup, maintenance, and accessory information, and a call 911 reminder sticker to complete and place near a phone. Now, let's go through the simple steps for setting up your defibrillator. Steps for installing the smart pads cartridge and the battery are the same whether you're setting up the device for the first time or just replacing them. And remember, time is critical with sudden cardiac arrest. So the defibrillator should always be stored with the pads cartridge and battery in place. This is what the smart pads cartridge looks like once it's been removed from its package. Keep in mind that an unopened and undamaged pads cartridge is designed to last two years. Check the expiration, and make a note of the date the cartridge is installed in the space provided in the owner's manual. Next, locate the pads cartridge compartment on the front of the device. Place the bottom end of the cartridge into the pads compartment, then push down until it clicks into place. The cartridge has a removable hard cover with a green handle. Underneath is a sealed package containing a pair of self-adhesive pads. Be sure you don't open the film seal of the cartridge until you actually need to use the pads. To work, the pads must have good contact with the patient's bare skin, and that is unlikely if the gel has dried out. And remember, always leave the hardcover in place to protect the pads until they're needed. You can also purchase Heart Start Infant Child Smart Pads cartridges separately from Philips, which are designed for children under eight years old or weighing less than 55 pounds. Refer to the owner's manual for information for using the infant child smart pads cartridge. When it is time to replace the pads cartridge, either after using them or when the device alerts you to, slide the latch to release it. The cartridge and pads material can typically be discarded as normal household waste.
install the battery, place the bottom end of the battery into the compartment. Press the top end down until the latch clicks into place. When the time comes to replace the battery, press the latch to release it. The battery typically lasts four years once it's installed. Mark the date you installed it in the owner's manual. As soon as the battery is inserted, the defibrillator will automatically begin a self-test, which takes about a minute. This is partly interactive, testing the various lights and controls. If the orange button is flashing, press it. Verified. The device will talk you through. Just press the buttons as instructed. After passing the self-test, it will automatically turn off and go to a standby mode, which means the defibrillator is ready for use as indicated by the blinking green ready light. Return the defibrillator to its case with the owner's manual in the pocket. Insert the quick reference guide in the clear plastic window. The quick reference guide should be visible when the case is open. You can see the green ready light through the window when the case is closed. The most easily recognized symptoms of sudden cardiac arrest are lack of responsiveness and lack of normal breathing. First, try to wake the person by tapping or gently shaking her shoulder and shouting, are you okay? If the person doesn't respond, call emergency medical services immediately, usually 911, even if she is not in sudden cardiac arrest. Tell the dispatcher that someone has collapsed and is unresponsive and that you have a home defibrillator. Quickly get it. If someone else is present, one of you should make the emergency call while the other gets the defibrillator. Next, check for breathing. Place your ear over the person's nose and mouth, watching to see if the chest rises. Usually a person in sudden cardiac arrest is not breathing at all, but sometimes abnormal ragged breaths are seen for a short time after collapse. If the person is still not responding and you can't see or feel the chest rise, you should use the defibrillator as quickly as possible. If you're unsure whether the person is breathing, you should still use the device. Place the device on the same side of the person that you are on and open the case. First, you will pull up on the green handle to remove the hard cover. Now this will turn on the defibrillator. You can also turn it on by pressing the green on-off button. Then the device will start giving you clear voice instructions, paced to allow you time to respond to each step. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. Quickly bare the person's chest by lifting, tearing, or cutting any clothing using the scissors provided if necessary. When patient's chest is bare, remove protective cover and take out white adhesive pads. Now peel off the film seal on the pad's cartridge. Remove the pads. They're already connected to the defibrillator, which senses when you remove the pads and will continue to guide you. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Peel one pad from the liner and place it exactly as shown in the illustration. It doesn't matter which pad is placed first. Press the pad down firmly to ensure good contact with the skin. Repeat with the other pad. The defibrillator senses when the pads are applied. If they do not make good contact, the smart pads alert the device and it will actually advise you to correct the problem. Now the defibrillator immediately begins to analyze the patient's heart rhythm. No one should touch the patient. Analyzing. The caution light flashes as a reminder that no one should touch or move the patient, which may interfere with the analysis. If a shock is needed, the orange shock button will start flashing and the voice will tell you, Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press the flashing orange button now. Make sure no one is touching the patient. Then press the flashing orange shock button. The defibrillator cannot deliver a shock unless you push the button, and it will permit a shock to be delivered only if it detects a treatable heart rhythm. 
Deliver shock now. Shock delivered. Be sure emergency medical services have been called. It is safe to touch the patient. Begin CPR. Notice the blue I button is blinking at this point. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue button. Press it and the device will give you basic coaching in performing CPR. It tells you how to give rescue breaths, where to place your hands, how deeply to compress the chest, and provides a rhythm for doing the compressions. The defibrillator can even tell if the infant child smart pads cartridge is installed and will then provide instructions for performing CPR on a child. If the patient is breathing, CPR is not needed. Simply tilt the head back to keep the airway open. However, leave the pads attached to the patient and the defibrillator on in case additional shocks are required. In all cases, continue to follow the Heart Start Home Defibrillator's voice instructions until the emergency team arrives. The Heart Start Home Defibrillator is designed to be extremely easy to maintain. As soon as the battery is installed, the device begins a daily schedule of self-tests to ensure its readiness for use. If a problem is detected, or the battery power is running low, or the SmartPads cartridge is not functioning properly, then loud chirping will alert you. Also, the green ready light turns off, and the blue eye button flashes. Press it for more specific information. Keep the Heart Start Home Defibrillator near a phone in a central location, such as the kitchen, bedroom, or living room. You want the defibrillator to be easily accessible in an emergency, and you want to be able to see and hear it. Be sure everyone knows where the defibrillator is stored, and return it to the same location if you take it out of the house. As you've seen, the Heart Start Home Defibrillator is fast to learn and easy to use. Still, we recommend that anyone who may use it review this video periodically at least once a year. Also review the owner's manual, which contains additional information about maintenance and accessories. A more detailed instructions for use manual is available on the World Wide Web at www.heartstarthome.com. It's a good idea to be ready for an emergency. CPR AED training, which combines instruction in CPR with training in the use of a defibrillator, typically takes a few hours and are available through several national and local CPR and first aid training organizations. With sudden cardiac arrest, time is critical. And now that you have a Heart Start Home Defibrillator, you can make the most of those precious minutes while waiting for professional help to arrive. And again, if you have any questions about the Heart Start Home Defibrillator or would like more information about training programs in your area or ordering accessories, call the Heart Start Home Defibrillator Information Line.